Hello everybody, this is uh, Jaeger doing a quick tutorial on how to play NCW3 for all the new TCG members that are in the community and people who are wanting to join. Just a quick tutorial on how to read everything. This is very complicated when you first look at it, but in actuality, it is very simple. So, when you first join, people are going to tell you either cores or customs or TOWs. So these two work together. These are the TOWs, Theaters of War, and the custom armies that you can play here. These are what mostly are played nowadays in the unit. Because we enjoy these the most, they'll have more of just freedom of choice to the player. These are all cores, everything from Egypt all the way to the 100 days. So you really don't have to worry about this while playing with us. But in the future, if you do play a battle with uh, other randoms, they may ask for these. So they do like an historical reenactment of a battle. So don't worry about this at the moment. Worry about this here. Everything on the right-hand column is what you're going to be choosing. That, goes, that applies for both alliances. See here, French. All these are used by us. All right, so we're gonna go over um, how they do the layout and everything for every army. So first, you're gonna choose the army that you want. So let's choose something complicated like Ten Pressure. As you see here, there's a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff that you probably don't know what what the hell it means. So first things first, you're gonna delete your unit. You can do that by right clicking. And this is one thing that you can tell new players are. If they look around, they see, oh, look, there's a bunch of cool-looking people here. Oh, look, he has three stars. I don't want him. And now, you effed up. This is a line unit. This is a general unit. This is not a general's bodyguard. And this will be spotted on the map no matter where it's at. So, when you do play a faction, you want to make sure you grab a general bodyguard unit. You see 16 men. And a very important name, that is a General's Mighty Guard unit. So for example, let's choose uh, Eugene. Alright, now once you selected Eugene, you see all this pop up. It can be very confusing at first, but in actuality it's very simple. Each section of this is an entire army corps that that General brought. So, Hans brought all these guys. Frederick brought all these guys here. So this is how you gotta think about it. He has all these, he has all these, and so on and so forth. So, a big important thing when compositing your army is looking at speeds of units. So, as you read the unit, say Crassier, something, something, and I have a speed. It'll be either C, L, G, S, or H, or F. C stands for Cav, G stands for Grenadiers, L stands for Line Infantry, Light, or Regulars, S stands for Skirms, F stands for Foot Artillery, and H stands for Horse Artillery. And the slower it is, the lower number it is, the slower it is. So these Crassiers are very slow because they're just heavy, they're heavy cab. They have lots of armor, so they're naturally slow. Medium calf or line calf, as some people call it. They're they have medium speed. They're not slow, but they're not fast either. They're in the middle. Light calf. This is their main bread and butter of scouting the enemy because they're fast and maneuverable. So we're gonna go by each section how they're always break down per army. So every single army composition will be laid out almost like this. There will be different units in it, or there'll be sections missing. That's because they didn't bring any. So for example here. He didn't have any Karasiers with him. Instead, he has Dragoons. He has Hussars, Grenadiers, Lights, Line Infantry, etc. That's going to be for every single army in this game. Alright, so you have your Karasiers, which are your Heavy Cav. They do a lot of shock damage. They're very good. And they have lots of numbers as Prussia. You right click on the unit and you can see all the other stats uh, melee, charge, defense, and morale. You really don't have to worry about this, it's all advanced stuff. I'm going to show you guys the basics here. They're good at charging, and they're good at... They will most likely win against any other cab unit in the game, because they have a heavy, really great charge bonus. They can destroy these units here, or these units here, depending on what abilities they have. So this unit has stamina. Stamina ability allows for the unit to regain stamina while walking. So after you do a, a big fight, and your units are exhausted, they will not do well in another fight again. 
instead of you have to sit there and not use them for an extended period of time, you can just walk that unit and they're revealing their stamina over here. Yeah, I find another unit. Another stamina again. Grenadiers. So as you can see, you know, usually the moment, uh, using a unit on the most left hand side of that section is going to be the most elite, most expensive unit. So these grenadiers are very good. Look at their stats. They can aspire, which they will aspire units around them, give them a little bit of morale boost. Uh, their shock resistance. So if they ever do get charged by either Cav, um, another grenadier unit, they'll have a brief period of where their morale cannot take a penalty at. So they'll do like a good five seconds of not getting instantly routed. And if they do, you know, get their ass beat, they will start routing as usual. But they do allow them to give them like a brief period of invulnerability to the morale. Square, squares are very good. It prevents them from being killed by Cav and stamina. For another example, if you look at this unit, on the left hand of the description box, you'll see a square icon that shows it in a square. Squares are very good because they're eventually getting run over by, you know, the shittiest cab. Let's say, for example, here's a 100 coin Kazaki unit. Your 1000 coin unit can square. That cost, uh, that, you know, armed with a pitchfork just murdered your most expensive unit because that can't square. Just keep that in mind. And you can see their speeds here. A good recommendation is to have your army positive of the same unit speed so they stay organized. So I see some people that just, you know, choose a bunch of random units that they like. You look at them. You know, L3, L3, L G3, S2, uh, L3, D4. Your units are not going to be synchronized while moving together. He's going to be ahead. He's going to be ahead. And these guys are only going to be moving at the same pace. So it helps your army stay organized if you have all the same speed. So L3, L3, L2, not the same speed. L3, L3. These will all, entire army here now, find another unit. This entire composition will move at the same speed. Next, um, we'll have our light infantry. They are good for pretty much um, outmaneuvering the enemy and on flanks. But they cannot melee, so if you do get in a melee battle, you're going to lose no matter what. Same thing with Grenadiers, they are good for their shock force. They are there to kick some ass and use their weapons and all their abilities, physical strengths, to go take buildings, houses, choke points, anything that you need to get done. These are your guys that will get down and dirty for you. They have really good stats, they have a charge bonus, and they can... Uh, Melee attack and they can defend. These are always used for defending or taking houses or charging the enemy if needed. Your skirmishers are good just to harass the enemy. You will not win a battle by using these. They're just good to harass and be a almost like a bait unit for their cab to come take out. Line of tree line of tree, this would be your main unit to be using in battle. So you have your L3s, L2s, so on and so forth here. Check their stats. This is a good unit right here. This is Astro. Really great stats. 26 accuracy, 85 reloading, 70 ammunition, and decent to below average morale. That's one thing about pressure has very average morale to below average. But we don't have to get into that uh, much later. So this is a basic thing here. The cannons. So what I always recommend before you choose a cannon, right click on it, pull up the actual box here, and just make sure to see how many guns it has. It could be different for every faction. This should be only two cannons. This should only be two cannons. You just want to make sure. It doesn't, you don't want to make a mistake here and buy you know, the most expensive cannon, and it's just one cannon. One operational gun. Anything here for horse artery? S2. This S2. And this S2. Horse artery is good because it allows you to move your cannons and move them around the map quickly. It's a good thing. Great thing if you have a very fast army that can keep up. Your cannons can keep up. Because these are... Artillery is not meant to be fast. They're meant to be slow. Yes, in some cases you can find some very fast foot artillery, like a, you know, maybe like a four pounder, you know, F5. I know for Russia and Britain, they have some very fast cannons themselves that can almost keep up with the entire army. So let's do a quick little army build to show you what I like to do. So I like to remove the general, find some uh, a general that I want to use for that day. Um, you see, they are pretty cheap, and he's pretty expensive, and he only has two stars. 
though Prussia has weak morale to begin with. And if you're good at micromanaging, you really don't need that extra morale boost. Bring in him. First thing I do, see, what's, uh, see what type of roles I got. So one of the things, most of the 10-pointers here, they have different type of roles. So you can either get this army or you don't. It depends and it'll change over time. And maybe once, beginning of the day, you're planning to get this entire role. Next day, this army is missing and there's another army and replacing him. It won't be any of these, there'll be a new general. I think there's like five to six generals in here, but you only get four. It keeps RNG based here and it keeps it um, randomized. You see on your toes. Alright, so a quick little army build I'm going to do. So, um, that's Prussia, really great Crassiers. So, and they have pretty, a pretty good price. So, I'm going to take these. Also, need your medium cav to be maneuverable. So, these all are really good here, cav wise. Stamina. These have really good stats for Crassiers. Shock resistant stamina is all you really need for a Crassier unit. Take another one just in case. You need some scout cav. Dash and Hussarin. C8s, very fast. Not going to get caught. And now, you're going to find your infantry. Since it's Prussia, I like to focus on infantry a lot. So, let's we'll try to get the same speed here. It's going to be kind of hard because not many of the units have the same speed. We're going to go for these guys here. These guys here. These, like I said, those guys are good. Since you have all this, unless you're really good at protecting your units, I recommend getting a square or two. So that can help ease, ease yourself from getting cap charged. So let's go find some quick uh, square wing units. The Koenig, get two of those, those are really good, expensive units. Like they have also, he's a Grenadier unit. And, you know, make some damage, make some noise. Alright, let's go for some Grenadier Guard. And, Cannon. And Bam, this is pretty much your basic army composition. Something I like to do, it's not as, it's very basic. You can, you know, rearrange this how many ways you want. This is pretty much your world. You can have an entire Grenadier army, you can have an entire Cav army, you can have an entire Cannon army if you want to. Not really, because the game doesn't really let you, but you can understand what I'm trying to say, uh, say here. You can do so much and change so many things. Russia. Bam, bam, bam. Same thing here. Britain. Probably the most beginner-friendly faction here. You can just spam these guys. They all can square and they all can shoot. You don't have to really micromanage these guys. Like for me, I enjoy uh, charging the enemy down. I like to use bring Russia and bring a lot of Grenadiers. Well, I didn't get any Grenadier roll, so that will not be happening. I got, oh, I got some Grenadiers here. Some Grenadiers here, but you guys get what I'm saying. This is just a basic tutorial on how to break down the uh, sections here. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know.